From the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive, this is 8700. Hello everyone from the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive. This is 8700 on DCTV 23. I'm Wes Talon. And I'm Lena Hardy. Thanks for joining us. Douglas County's fiscal year is the same as its calendar year, and the county's finance director recently told the Board of Commissioners that the county finances are in good shape. Revenues in 2016 totaled $82.5 million, which was 99% of what was estimated at the beginning of the year. Expenditures in 2016 totaled only 88.8% .8 of what was budgeted. Actual expenditures were under budget by 11%. This has resulted in an unassigned fund balance of about $14.2 million after the Bleakley Building renovations, the courthouse renovations, bond funds, and the animal shelter costs are completely handled. Douglas County has no long-term debt. The county's financial condition has resulted in strong bond credit ratings from Standard & Poor's and Moody's. The credit ratings are AA from S&P and AA2 from Moody's with a notation of a stable outlook. The rating agencies noted strong budgetary performance with operating surpluses in the general fund at the total governmental fund level, very strong budgetary flexibility with available fund balances, and very strong liquidity. The county went to the market earlier this month to sell $60 million worth of bonds to begin several of the SPLOSS projects. Due to the credit rating and the strong financial position of the county, the bonds were able to be sold at a low interest rate, which is to the county's benefit. The bonds are for five years at an interest rate of 1.71%. 29 different institutional investors submitted orders for the county's bonds, and three of them offered to purchase the entire $60 million offering. $502 million in orders were taken for the $60 million in bonds. The SPLOST itself, the Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax, began April 1st when the sales tax increased from 6 to 7 percent in Douglas County. The one-cent sales tax will continue for six years. We'll fund specific projects that were approved by the voters last November. A detailed list of the county's SPLOST project is, is on the county's website, CelebrateDouglasCounty.com under Programs. Douglas County's unemployment rate in February was 5.3 percent. These are the latest statistics available. It was a drop of four-tenths of a percent from January. The city of Douglasville's unemployment rate was 5.5 percent. The Georgia Department of Labor credits the drop in unemployment to employers creating more jobs and more people going to work. Douglas County industries and manufacturers are looking for employees. Douglas County Communications and Community Relations will be hosting a jobs fair from 3 to 7 p.m. Thursday, April 27th, the Courthouse Atrium, and numerous businesses will be on hand and will be meeting with anyone interested in a job, telling you how to apply. Admission to the jobs fair is free and it's open to the public. Thursday, April 27th, 3 to 7 p.m. at the Douglas County Courthouse, 8700 Hospital Drive. Part of my job is community relations and working with local businesses and residents to meet their needs, hence the job fair on April 27th that helps both businesses and citizens. The county has recently created a new position to ensure that county interests are being heard at the Georgia State Capitol and in Washington, D.C. I'll talk with that person next on Issues and Answers, so please stay with me. I'm Lena Hardy. And I'm Wes Talon, and this is 8700 on DCTV 23. She's an author, a lawyer, and a real estate expert. Now, she's also Douglas County's External Affairs Director. Mrs. Tiffany Stewart Stanley began work February 28th as Douglas County's first External Affairs Director. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. So, as the first External Affairs Director, explain to me what are your duties and responsibilities? Okay, sure. 
So basically, basically, as external affairs director, what I do is I go and I advocate for Douglas County. And by advocating for Douglas County, I advocate at the state legislature. Mm -hmm. I advocate on the federal level. And I also advocate outside of Douglas County externally with the business community and other mm -hmm. elected officials. Okay. And so why this position? What, what interested you about this position? Well, I, I have a background in law, mm -hmm. and I also have some experience working in communications, and I also have some political experience work running campaigns. Mm -hmm. So I felt like this position would be a way to kind of include all of those, all of my background, all of my history, and all of the things that I love. Mm -hmm. So from my experiences working down at the state capitol with Roger Bruce as his communications director, mm -hmm. running campaigns for elected officials, running campaigns for municipalities and jurisdictions. I just really love people mm -hmm. and I really love legislation and just actually being able to affect people's lives mm -hmm. and affect public policy. Yes. So you have so much experience. Um, I know you've been been in this position for a little over a month. It's been about five <laughs> just, yeah, weeks. It's been yeah. just a short period yes. of time. Um, so uh, what surprises have come up um, just in this uh, a little over a month? I think just actually um, the, the, the most, the thing that I think has most surprised me is just actually being able to go down to the Capitol and actually be able to have an effect on legislation. Mm -hmm. To be able to go down and say the people of Douglas County would like this to happen. Yes, and yes. to have our legislators to actually listen and say, okay, Ms. Stewart Stanley, you brought up some great points. I may adjust this bill or I may do that. I right. think that you, you'll be surprised the power of mm -hmm. just going down saying, a county of 140,000 people don't want this, or they do want this, mm -hmm. and how it can affect um, how legislation is being shaped in the state. Right. And have there been any issues that the citizens of Douglas County have, have brought to your attention to take to the U.S. Congress and state capitol? Well, we ha I've had some people talk to me about the slaughter crimes. Mm -hmm. um, that was a bill that was sponsored by State Representative William Bodie. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of people were saying, basically, you know, please help us support this bill. Now, I speak for the Board of Commissioners, so okay. I get my direction from the Board of Commissioners. Mm -hmm. But I do take into consideration what the citizens tell me, and then I take it to the Board of Commissioners, and I will say, well, you know, some of the citizens said they like this bill or they don't like that bill. Mm -hmm. And as far as the Board of Commissioners, have you been working well and communicating well oh, with yes. them? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I've... I've, I've Gotten to know the, most of them a little bit better mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, just actively, you know, listening to their ideas about policy. I mm -hmm. also live to, listening to their ideas about grants. I'm also over grant management and grant oversight. Okay. So mm -hmm. I've had a great opportunity to work with them and I look forward to working with them more in the future. Oh, that's great, yes. Mm -hmm. And just as far as Douglas County, you know, have you been really liking it? I know you've, 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 you've do you live here? Yes, yes I have live lived here? here now for, oh, I, I moved here because my husband mm -hmm. was here. I met mm -hmm. him and, and moved here. And I, I love the people of Douglas County. Mm -hmm. I have had opportunities to work with them through the Junior League. I'm also mm -hmm. on the Cultural Arts Council Board. So just, you know, just getting to work with them and, mm -hmm. and, and just getting to know them has made me want to go out and be the great advocate for the county. So I, I love Douglas County. I mm -hmm. think it'll probably be my home forever. <laughs> yes. Because I do, I truly, I love the people here. Yes, well, on behalf of Douglas County, we're happy to have oh, you. Thank and you. Thank you for all of the information. And thank, thank you. you for speaking with us. Good thank luck you. in your new position. Thank you. Yes. Wes and I will be back in a moment with more news, so please stay with us. I'm Lena Hardy, and this is 8700 on DCTV 23. Welcome back. Cooper Carey Architects has been retained to start the design stage of the Fox Hall Resort and Sporting Club to be located off Camps Ferry Road in southern Douglas County. The design includes the size and layout of guest rooms, conference center, lobby, restaurant, and administration space. Once the design has been completed and its project cost estimated, Fox Hall will secure its financing for construction. Fox Hall, the Douglas County Development Authority, and the Douglasville Douglas County Water and Sewer Authority have finalized an agreement that will jointly fund a study of the drainage basin to address the most feasible routing of the sewer line to serve the facility. It is anticipated that construction of the resort buildings will begin in late 2017. Students, parents, school system employees, elected officials, and giants in the field of technology came together March 28th to celebrate the computer science for all initiative in Douglas County school system. The program is the first in the state to offer computer science instruction to all students in grades K through 12. 
Over the next three years, the School Systems Computer Science Task Force will work to develop teacher capacity, integrate computer science into existing math and science classes, and create courses solely focused on computer skills. The celebration took place in the Douglas County Courthouse Atrium and featured speakers from Google, Georgia Tech, the Georgia Department of Education, and Code.org. Students were on hand demonstrating projects involving computer science, including robotics and coding. The complete K-12 curriculum is expected to be finalized by the start of the 2018-2019 school year. In other school system news, Chris Small, athletic director at Alexander High School, was recently named the 2017 Region 5 6A Athletic Director of the Year. The award is made by the Georgia Athletic Directors Association and recognizes the outstanding achievements of Alexander High School sports program. Cedric Slay from Sweetwater Elementary School, Jaslyn Dukes from Turner Middle School, Pamela Cummings from New Manchester High School were named Counselors of the Year in the school system. Counselors are nominated by teachers, administrators, and staff from across the school district. Douglas County is a welcoming community and people of many nationalities are moving here. To make the transition a little easier, the West Georgia Board of Realtors is rolling out a new program. We'll talk about that next on Newsmakers, so please stay with us. I'm Wes Allen. And I'm Lena Hardy, and this is 8700 on DCTV 23. The West Georgia Board of Realtors is the voice of real estate in West Georgia. Members have the wonderful task of helping the rest of us achieve the American dream of home ownership. To accomplish this task, they offer multiple services, and Amy McCoy joins me. Tell me about a new outreach program that they are offering. Amy, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. First, let's talk about the West Georgia Board of Realtors. About how many realtors do y'all have? We have about 260 plus members and affiliates. That's a lot of realtors. Yes. How many, what, what geographic area is the West Georgia Board cover? Well, we are the Douglas County chapter. However, we have a lot of realtors that are in the Paulding County, Cobb County, Fulton County, Carroll County, pretty much all of West Georgia. Okay, and then are there realtors maybe in Atlanta who are trying oh, yes. to, ooh, this is a hot market out here? Absolutely. There? I personally live in Atlanta, but I do most of my business out here in Douglas County. Hey, so. Your office is located here, though, so Absolutely. you are a local businesswoman. Absolutely. So this is good. The West Georgia Board of Realtors is all about fair housing. Yes. Uh, but you've also uh, started a new initiative to help um, our new nationalities, our new residents moving into here achieve this American dream. Tell me about that. Yes. So when bringing more people into, into Douglas County, we want to celebrate the inclusion of all cultures into our area. Um, as Atlanta is continuously growing, um, we are a more international city, we want to help make Douglas County and all of West Georgia more inclusive, um, bringing different cultures, different um, uh, ethical backgrounds out here. So. Okay, and because you were saying Atlanta is a major, a major international, international city, city. And many coming out here. So when we're talking about different cultures, things like that, kind of tell me a little bit more about what we're talking about. So, um, from religious backgrounds, um, okay. I, obviously we have from uh, Christian base as well as from Muslims, um, and also for uh, people of the LGBTQ community. Okay. Um, we are trying to make Douglas County more inclusive. For say, uh, those that don't speak English as a native language, uh, one of the main focuses with West Georgia Board is we are going to uh, start showcasing more of the agents that have uh, multi language experience, language experience um, to help those that are looking to buy in our area uh, to be able to help uh, communicate with them and translate uh, the common practices that go on here in Georgia to help them achieve that American dream of home ownership. Buying a house is not an easy process no. anyway. Um, I bought a few in my, in my lifetime. Uh, the home inspection, the offer, the counter offer, the signing of the contracts that it's the a closing that lasts for three hours because you have to <laughs> sign 472 and a half other pace absolutely this the, i can you know i didn't think about it in, until we were talking about this uh, that can be a daunting 
it's procedure a very tedious process. for for somebody that's in yes. in your in in English. I I can't even imagine what it might be. So if there is someone, um, let's talk about maybe someone who is Hispanic. Mm -hmm. About ten percent of our population is Hispanic and Latino, and uh, so Spanish is most likely their primary language. Mm -hmm. So How we do they access with you? Great. So what we have is a set of agents that are within our community um, that we want to highlight um, on our website um, that those people that are coming into the community can actually go there as a, as a uh, way of um, accessing, those, accessing services. those services to be able to find the agent that can help them, guide them through, know who to put them in touch with. Um, to help help them get those services from mortgage lending or from the home inspection, uh, the correct attorneys that can help translate that process and make it easier for them. Uh -huh. So, okay, and having the services of a realtor will help navigate that. Okay, and you said your website. So, what uh -huh. is your website? It's www.westgeorgia.org. I'm sorry, www.westgeorgiaboard.org. Dot org. Okay, mm -hmm. on that. So by advertising this and people coming in and accessing Spanish language mm -hmm. bilingual or multilingual yes. agents, yes. then that helps them move here, helps our agents um, do their business well, increases local wealth, all these good things that, that, that we want to do. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it, it was interesting when you said uh, the different diversities and cultures and that you included religion and sexuality in there as well as nationality. Uh, fair housing does require this, does it not? Yes, there are several protected classes um, and as even in here in 2017 we're expanding on that. Um, with the Fair Housing Act uh, it initially just covered you know color, race, uh, national origin, sex, familial status, um, and religion. And now we're expanding on that to, uh, well, in 1968 included disability. Um, and now for 2017, we're fighting to add uh, gender equality, uh, gender identity. So we're still, we're still fighting the, that civil rights cause. Trying to get that, well, fighting the civil rights, but making sure that Everyone's everyone included. has the chance right. to buy a house on an equal basis. Exactly. Exactly. Amy? Thank you for the information. No, appreciate I you appreciate coming in you guys for having us. You bet. And thank you. Thanks for coming in. Lena and I'll be back in a moment with more news, so please stay right here. I'm Wes Talon, and this is 8700 on DCTV 23. Welcome back. State Representative Micah Gravely authored a resolution that was adopted by the Georgia House of Representatives to honor Douglas County Amunakanasta Garden Club, and it was formally presented to them during the March 20th session of the House at the State Capitol. The resolution recognized the Garden Club's 50th anniversary and recognitions by UGA and the Deep South region of the National Garden Club. Amunakanasta was recognized in 2011 as the best garden club in the seven southern states, as well as their scholarship programs and the Butterfly Garden at Cultural Arts Center. Members of the Ama Canasta Garden Club were in the gallery of the House of Representatives during the recognition, were asked to stand and received an ovation from the House. The resolution was supported by the entire local legislative delegation. Douglas County residents will be able to bring their personal documents, tax records, financial reports, old love letters, anything on paper to the Douglas County Courthouse on Saturday morning, April 22nd for the great Douglas County Shredding event sponsored by Minor Realty Group, Carol Williams Cityside, and the Douglas County Department of Communications and Community Relations. Douglas County is bringing two bank quality shredding trucks to the courthouse parking lot. Residents will be able to drive through to have their papers shredded while they watch. Shredded papers will be disposed of in a FDIC approved facility. The event will be held from 9 a.m. to 12 noon and residents will be directed through the courthouse parking lot to the drive through area. However, if the two trucks fill up, the event will end at that time, so residents are encouraged to come early. 
The event is free and open to the public. Shredding is limited to the personal records of county residents. Businesses are not eligible for this service. Residents taking advantage of the great Douglas County Shredding event are invited to have coffee and donuts with minor Realty Group's professionals while watching their personal papers being shredded. And that's the news for now from 8700. I'm Lena Hardy. And I'm Wes Talon. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. <laughs>